morning everyone welcome to another session of reflections it's just been um, a wonderful weekend by god's grace i hope you've been able to get out and um, and enjoy the sun and uh, for those of uh, those of us who were able to start back at work um, I, uh, it, it is truly a different time but i'm sure that um, you are glad to be out at last and for those who have been working throughout, well, we celebrate you and we thank God that you're, you are still here and that you can still hear the sound of my voice. And by the special grace of God, you will continue to be here. And the God of heaven who has preserved you this far will continue to preserve you. So go ahead and share. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and start a watch party. Please spread the word. Spread the word, please. Um, because God is touching lives even as we minister in this place. So please go ahead, share, have um, watch parties. Tell people who don't have Facebook that they can go back and watch on YouTube. Everything is on YouTube and you can always go back on your Facebook too and look at, um, and look at whatever sessions you have missed. Uh, by God's grace, we are heading towards, uh, towards 80. In another few days, we would have had 80 sessions and I tell you, when I sit back and I play back some of those things, it's ministering back to me. Um, and so every time I sit here and um, I, I share with you, it's something that God is speaking to my heart. This week, I think, I'm not sure yet, but this, <clears throat> this week I think we'll be looking at, at um, the darkest night. The darkest night. Or we may also call it uh, peace. Uh, during the storm but we I'm, I'm thinking through I beg your pardon I'm, I'm just thinking through um, yes but before we go into that this morning I, I believe there's somebody out there there's something specific for you something very very specific for you um, as I woke up this morning a scripture came to my heart so I believe that it's for someone out there and it's Esther chapter 6 verse 13 Esther chapter 6 verse 13 in that passage the Bible says when Haman told his wife Zeresh and all his friends everything that had happened to him um, his wise men and his wife Zeresh said to him if Mordecai before whom you have begun to fall is of Jewish descent you will not prevail against him but we surely fall before him. If Mordecai, whom you have begun to fall before, is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but we surely fall before him. So if you are a child of God under the sound of my voice, and you are looking all around and you are wondering what on earth is going on, and we've been seeing a few things in the political climate, I want to assure us that The evil is not going to prevail against us. We have seen an, as an, an ascent. Ascent, we have seen a rising up. We have seen eyes being opened and people saying, is this what is going on? I want us to understand that if we remain as children of God, this system, this systemic system, that has begun to fall before us, that we have begun to rise against, will surely fall. It will no longer prevail against us. That systemic problem we've been having will no longer prevail against us. And if you are also there and it appears as if somebody's hand has been so much against you or a system has been so much against you. The friends of Haman said to him, you cannot prevail against these people for the simple reason that they are God's people. They are under covenant. So the safest way and the surest way to prevail in any situation is to be a child of covenant and to remain in righteousness with God. All right then. So I said I was going to start talking about the darkest night. 
there might be somebody out there you've gone through a very difficult time or you are going through a very very difficult time i want to tell you a story many years ago my mom was seriously ill um, and if you've known me you would you will have had this story before she's actually the reason I, I i i came to the u.s because she was very ill and um, we we had to seek um, better medical treatment for her and she had cancer it was terminal however when they did the surgery because it had um, she, she it was already in her spine when they were going to do the surgery the doctors said they sat us down you know how they usually do and they said look uh, it's a 50 50 chance um, we may go in she may make it she may not and even if she makes it it's very likely that she will be paralyzed <laughs> talking about between the devil and the deep blue sea well i think i'll choose the deep blue sea any day over over the devil because you really don't want to have anything to do with the devil However, when they gave us that, uh, when they sat us down and they told us that, um, well, we had no choice. <laughs> I mean, there was, it was a choice of she will die or we will take a risk with her life. And even with that risk, they felt that she may come out paralyzed. Cut a long story short, the morning of the surgery, we took her in. They had the surgery. They said everything went well. She came out alive. But then the surgeon said, we don't know. We don't know, know whether she would be paralyzed um, from, the, from somewhere high up in the, uh, in the back area. Um, so, but they said, go home and um, if anything happens, we will call. If she... So my, my uncle was, uh, was working in the hospital at that time. He was one of those, so he, one, one of the, he, he was present during the surgery. And he said, you guys go home. Go, ju just go home. He said, um, um, I will sit here and wait. I will sit here with her uh, and, and wait. And if anything happens, I will let you know. He was also anxious, <laughs> of course. So we all went, um, we went home. My cousin and I went home because it was my cousin then. Uh, so we went home and... Um, I slept. I slept. Uh, we left, I think we left the hospital about six. It was New York. I think maybe we might have gotten home around eight. Uh, but we did go home because it was also a very long surgery from morning. And um, so the following morning I woke up. And I, you did, what happened? Well, I slept off. You know what he said to me? He said, I came into the room. Because uncle called about 12, 10, 12, uh, a little after midnight. He didn't go home. He had worked all day in the hospital, but he couldn't just leave. <laughs> he couldn't leave his uh, big sister there. So he said, and um, he called. And he said, I just saw her move her feet. So I'm going home now. He waited until she moved her feet. My cousin said, I couldn't wake you up. He said, when I came in, he said, you were sleeping like a baby. I want to say to that person, God can give you peace in the midst of the storm. It's difficult. It's hard. You don't know how all this is going to end. But as you wait, peace, be still, and know that he is God. Peace, be still, and know that he is God. Peace. Be still and know that he is God. 
May the peace of God garrison your heart. May the peace of God uphold you. May the peace of God quiet your spirit. May the peace of God carry you through what is looking like your darkest night. And when morning breaks, May the joy of the Lord wash over you, body, soul, and spirit. Weeping may endure for the night, for joy comes in the morning. God bless you. It's Fumi Obilani. Reflections. <laughs>